Hello and welcome to the NBS Review and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Torterra. Norman, look what you made me do. You made me miss the secret ending. Now I gotta restart the game all over again. Well, that's your fault for watching YouTube. Nah. <laughs> so, quick reminder and whatnot. I mentioned in the news show that I was on vacation and we took... Oh yeah, we took a week off, and it's kind of my fault for not planning this right because we really wobbly timey wimey stuff. But in the end, on the date that we're recording this, Silver is still at a convention. Uh, where did he go, Terra? Uh, Harmony Con, I believe it's called. Yeah, Harmony Con. So currently, Silver is in Harmony Con doing the fun stuff, while we're here at the studio doing the boring stuff yeah it's not gonna be that exciting <laughs> yeah but i'm sure we'll manage it somehow so anyway in cases like this what we like to do most of the time is talk about other things other than ponies and the last time that this happened we talk about video games isn't that right tara yes i remember that <laughs> it was a fun discussion too ah good times <laughs> Yep, yep. So, I I feel that we should repeat the habit again. And, well, this week's discussion is going to be, well, I recently bought a... Well, to be honest, um, it's a shared own thing. I bought a Switch, and I am a proud owner of a Switch. So, yay! Awesome me, go me. Shocker, isn't it? Norman finally has a Switch. I know. But here's the thing, I got no idea what to buy slash play. All I know is that I have a few starting games like, you know, uh, the Mario Karts and then some. I- I'll talk about the other games that I bought, but uh, let's just say that I'm a brand new Switch owner and what do I do, Tara? Like, w- when you bought your first well, sorry, when you bought your Switch, what did you do? When I first got the Switch, I pretty much got it out on the day it first came out, so it wasn't really a lot of games out that time. But I basically got, I guess you could say the game that kind of came with the Switch, which was 1-2 Switch, which mm-hmm. kind of still confuses me, But because at first, like every time they release a new console, when the Wii U got released, it came with a game, which mm-hmm. was Nintendo Land. But when the Switch got released... It didn't come with a game, so you have to get the game and the console separate. Yeah, that, that puzzled me a bit, because didn't the Nintendo console usually come with a packing game? Yeah, like even the original Wii, it came with the Wii Sports. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And what, Wii U came with what? Because uh, when I got the Wii U, it was part of a bundle. Uh, it came in with Mario, Zelda, and so on. I, I don't remember, it's been a while. Well, I know that when the Wii U first came out, it came with a game called Nintendo Land. So, yeah, what what you, you said that you bought uh, one to Switch. How was that? Like, I know it's a tech demo to show off the Joy-Con's capability with the HD Rumble, but was it worth the $60 or, in your case, $70, was it? Yes, because the, the price range is different. <laughs> yeah, you're Canadian, by the way, so... Yes. The pricing is a bit different in the northern part of the Americas. Yes, like say for example, if I'm to commission someone twenty dollars, I'll actually be paying like thirty seven dollars or something like that. <laughs> Wait, I thought the Canadian dollars is much stronger than the American dollars, no? Yes. I mean, <laughs> wait, I think I just messed that up. <laughs> I, I think yeah. I, I think I meant to say twenty dollars US, uh... and then it goes, and then it comes out of. The th- around thirty dollars Canadian there. <laughs> Wait, so Canadian dollars is a bit weaker than the dollar than American dollar. Yes, just a little uh, bit. All right. Yeah, I didn't answer your question. Um, it's good, but with a family or party, like if you just try playing it by yourself, I mean, obviously you can't even play that game by yourself because the whole point of that game is you don't look at the TV screen; you look at your opponent in the eye. I mean, you, there are some games where you look at the TV screen, but there are some games where you look at your opponent in the eye. Like, there's one game called Quick Draw, where you're basically having a standoff, like a cowboy western standoff, and you just, <laughs> right. look at, you just look at each other in the eye. 
And as soon as the guy on the TV says fire, you pull up your controllers and you push the trigger and you point at each other and shoot. Ah. So how was that experience? Fun? Oh, yeah, very fine. We had some good moments on that. There's even one time where me and my cousin, we both shot the trigger at the same time and we got a draw. <laughs> oh, wow. That's so cool. Because the game even capture like it, it even captures like the seconds. Like you could be one uh, second off or it'd be like, oh, how, I thought I got you. And then you see, you'd be like, uh, I got, say, 0. 0.1 and the other person got 0. 0.2. It's like, oh, off by a little point. <laughs> yeah, a millisecond. Yeah. So that sounds fun. Would you say that it's a worth a buy? If you go to a lot of parties or if you if you have a lot of family members that like to get together, then yeah, I, w- I would recommend that. But if you're a person that's mostly by himself or don't have a lot of friends or don't go to a lot of parties, I wouldn't recommend it. Ah, uh, all right. Because the first game I bought was Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. And nice. it it was not it was not a bad game, but I felt that it was repetitive, if you know what I mean. How so? Well, here's the thing. Um, you're just racing around the track. <laughs> there's no variety. Okay, there's variety in it, but in the, uh, there's there's not much to it. Like it's just going around the track, going around the track. That's basically all racing games, though. <laughs> I know, but I, I something about it, like, it's hypnotizingly good, but at the same time, too, it's kind of, I wouldn't say bad. It's, mm, how to put this? It's kind of redundant, boring at times. Like, you could use something else. Nice change of pace on it. Eh? True. I mean, then again, you play it mostly by yourself. Kind of, but the thing is... The Switch is mostly a shared console with me and my friend. Mm-hmm. So basically, we, the games that we buy tend to be those of multiplayer games. So that's my situation with the Switch. Uh, what about you? What's your, what's your situation like? Well, for me, I also got Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. But another thing too is I had Mario Kart 8 for the Wii U. So I kind of sold that already because, you know, there's no point huh? having Mario Kart 8 if you have the Deluxe already. Mm-hmm. But for me, I I mean, I've played Mario Kart over the years. I've played it since the Super Nintendo, to the N64, to Devil Dash. So, you know, I've been playing it throughout the years. And yeah, like you said, it's still the same thing and so on. But like you also said, it's, I guess you could say, hypnotizing. Like, yeah, it's the same concept, but it just drags you and you have so much fun. And I know me and my friends, we have a lot of fun playing together because... They get angry when I win all the time, and they basically say, or ask, what is it? Do you have a horseshoe up your butt? (laughs) Nah. Because even the items I I get, I'm so lucky. (laughs) I have a Pokeball. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah, after that, like, after getting uh, the, what, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, I joined into the Nintendo Club, the uh, paid service Nintendo T. What was it called again? Nintendo on- Switch Online. Yeah, the, the Switch Online T. And one of the first games I got and bought is Tetris Ninety Nine. Is it Tetris Ninety Nine? Yeah, yeah Tetris, Tetris Ninety Nine. Yep, bought that one, and whoo boy, I, I'm noticing that I enjoy that game a lot. Did you ever win? Yeah, I got first place a few times. Like, I got number one a few times, and it was so much fun. What about yourself? I never won that game. <laughs> I try so many times. I always be close, but I can never win first place. Ah, uh-huh, all right. Did you did you bought into it? Like, did you pay the, what, 10 bucks was it, or 20 bucks? I, I didn't pay the uh, additional 10 bucks. I think it was like a DLC or something like that. Yeah, it uh, gave you more options, uh, more... Modes, more stuff. I I don't remember, but uh, oh, it also gives you local multiplayer. Yeah, which I find actually a bit ridiculous, but that's why I have Puyo Puyo Tetris instead of just playing Tetris ninety nine. But how much do you pay for Puyo Puyo Tetris? I actually don't remember. I think I got it for like thirty dollars. <laughs> See, it kind of defeats the purpose, you know, like thirty versus ten. Yeah. <laughs> 
I mean, it, 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 I, I understand what you mean at the same time too. But you know, it's it's a it's a matter of perspective and interest because to me, I really enjoy Tetris, and that's that's that game. Uh, it's one of those games where I could just play for hours, like just sit down and not get bored. And I got no idea why or how, but that game is just hypnotizing. Yeah, like, this is basically what we said about Mario Kart. We play it over and over again, but it's it's still fun. Even no matter how many times they release a new Tetris or a new Mario Kart, we still have fun. True. But I, I think the only difference with 99 is that it's a battle royal kind of system where you're fighting against other players. So yeah. the competitive nature of that kind of flourish in the player base a good example i I bought tetris effect for the playstation 4 it's a fun game it's really nice and it's oh wow it it is amazing it's it's a beautiful game but it ain't no tetris 99 (laughs) like the feeling of fighting against another player on the board trying to get number one and getting number one that's that's great that 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 is the feeling that you want yeah, but that's that's just uh, an example of how I perceive the game. So, what was your second game? Like after the went to Switch and the Mario Kart Deluxe, what else? Uh, did you that bought? would be Super Bomberman R, I believe. Ah, how was that game? Like I, I played Bomberman in the olden days of the SNES with Bomberman. Super Bomberman, what, uh, one and two and three and so on until six. Oh man, uh, it, like okay, I know we're gonna keep repeating this, but same as always, it's Bomberman. But they they actually have a little story mode to it, and uh, uh, it's like they, they kind of change up the adventure a bit because it's not like the classic, you know. You, I mean, it kind of is the classic, but they have different platforms and different enemies to go to. And to be honest, I actually had a very hard time going through the campaign. It was actually harder than it looks. Oh, really? No. So, is it worth it? Like, I, I'm thinking about getting it, but I'm not 100% sure if I should. Well, I mean, if you liked Bomberman in the previous games, then I think you'd like it. And especially if you have friends to play with, it'd be even more fun. Oh, really? No. It's, so, it's a, they have a local multiplayer? Yes, they have local multiplayer, and you could play the campaign together as well. Oh, cool, cool! So that's something to keep out and keep an the eye out. Thing there, you right? gotta, the only thing you gotta watch out for is that in the campaign, you both share lives. Oh, so basically, if I have someone who doesn't know how to play that, yeah, yeah that's something yes. Fun. <laughs> so for me, my second game is kind of a combo because uh, I have a game store here where for Let's just say a hundred bucks, or was it cheaper than a hundred bucks? Like thirty, sixty. Let's just say seventy bucks dollars. Uh, you get two games for the price of one, something like that. And it was kind of a cool offer, so I got two games, and those two games are Dragon Dawn of New Riders, the How to Train Your Dragon game. Oh, I've heard of that one. It's not bad. It's not bad. Like, it's no... How do I put this? It's not challenging, but it's still fun. My friend wanted to buy the game and, yeah, we played it. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah, I don't have the game, so I wouldn't know. If you can get in on rental, go ahead. I wonder if you can get rental on Switch. Uh, I don't think you can. But anyway, um, the second one was Samurai Showdown, the new one. It's not bad. But I haven't really touched that game. Um, fighting games are fun, but like I said, I haven't really touched it to give it a proper review. So, yeah. like, you, you can see the pattern of my games. Like, uh, adventure kind of game, uh, 3D adventure, top-down stuff, blah, 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 and mostly two players and stuff. So, uh, that's, that's the direction I'm going with my games. So, it's kind of limited to what games that I want because Steam is always there for me. <laughs> but what do you recommend, man? Like, do you have any suggestions for two-player games? Oh, I have so many games on my Switch, I don't know what I could recommend. Do you buy I mean, your games digitally or physically? A mixture of both. I bought some physically and some digitally. 
Okay. Because the thing that's that's um, I don't know if you could say it's sad or it's good. Depends on how you look at it. Because I know some people like to have the physical copy of games, and some people don't really care about that. But the thing is, they are sometimes digitally they make games go on sale, and it's good because for one, the game's on sale. But for those who like to have the physical copy. It's sad because they have to actually go to the store, which is uh, not on sale in person. Take, for example, uh, they had a New Year's sale where they had a couple of games that were like 15, no, 30% off. And one of those games I got was Hyrule Warriors. I never played that game on the Wii U, so that's why I got on the Switch. But now it's like, hey, I have Hyrule Warriors. And it's like, oh, can I borrow? Be like, uh, no, because I don't have the physical copy. I bought it when it was on sale. Oh, no. Well, that's what I'm saying. But... It could be a good thing for some people. It could be bad for some people as well. Ah, I see, I see. And honestly, it's... Uh, what well, I understand the feeling because... Certain games, when they go on sale, it's surprisingly cheap. Uh, over here, what if you get Resident Evil Four? No, Four um, Two Remake. Uh, let's just say normal price would be sixty dollars. Agree? Yeah, I think so. But on Steam, if there's a sale, the game can be stupid cheap. Oh yeah. So sometimes getting the digital copy it's a much better option because you save more. But on top of that, right, don't you need space for your Wii? Because I'm... Sorry, Wii. Uh, I was going to say, what? <laughs> don't you need space? Because if I remember right, the internal memories for the Switch was 20 gigs or 30 gigs, was it? I don't remember. It's something like that, if I remember right. Yes, you will need a lot of space if you're doing it digitally. Yes. What accessories do you bought for your Switch? You know what? The only accessories I really have is the screen protector. Really? Yeah. I mean, because obviously you're going to be putting the Switch in and out of the dock. So Mm -hmm. it might be a possibility that there's scratch marks on it. I mean, I haven't seen any scratch marks on my screen, so I wouldn't know. Oh, that's good. So that's the only thing you bought for your Switch? Yeah, I don't really have anything else. Huh. All right. Because... For me, I I love the accessories for the Switch because I don't know why or don't know how, but the Switch here has a plethora of accessories. Uh, when I got my Switch at first, it uh, the guy recommend me to get the uh, tin tin case. It comes sorry, it came with a screen protector. So yay me! So I got that. But at the, uh, later on, I bought the joystick protector, the nubs, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I bought that in. Then I bought a travel pouch for the Switch. And then I bought a carrying case to put in all of the accessories. And <laughs> later on, I bought a third-party pro controller. And I don't know why, but the Switch has a lot of accessories that are really cool. I haven't bought a lot of uh, accessories, but I, I've seen a lot of accessories online. Mm-hmm. Did you buy the Pro Controller? At least did you buy that? Yes, I bought the Pro Controller because playing on the small little Joy-Cons kind of cramps up my hands a bit because it's so small. Yeah, I understand. That's why I bought the Pro, uh, the quote unquote Pro Controller. Is the D pad squishy? On the Pro Controller? Yeah. Not really. Huh, so it's just my joystick then. I bought what? A Nico Pro Controller? Like that one was... The button was squishy. So yeah, I guess it's my fault for buying something cheaper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I need to save money. Oh yeah, I have, you, I have to. Yeah. Oh, talking about that. Uh, talking about accessories. The Have you heard about uh, Skull and Co's... Uh, core dock thingy where you can just put in an adapter at the bottom of the switch on the USB type C and you can plug it into your TV, uh, HDMI and power. No, I haven't. Let me show you because this is a really good product. This is an accessory that is really cool because uh, there's a lot of docks out there 
that you know like docks for your switch uh, you have your fancy one the official one what well, official one is uh, about what seventy dollars was it I don't remember <laughs> yeah I, I remember them saying that it's it could be about seventy dollars something like that so yeah it's a bit expensive oh, but yeah. From what I see here, like the Skull and Co. Let me show you this here. Um, what they call it is the Jump Gate is a miniature version of the dock that you can carry around. And oh, that's you cool. Can, yep, uh, you can carry around and you can just, well, put it anywhere in your pocket. The uh, key feature or the most important thing is the core core engine or whatever it is or the core part where you can just remove it and put it in your pocket if you want to put it in your screen you can just plug it in plug in the hdmi plug in the power like a uh, official dock and voila you got a smaller version of it ah huh. that's not bad <laughs> and they did their research on this one because uh, there's a lot of third-party uh, switch docks that may break your switch they did a whole test about it here um, like go check it out and whatnot so i bought this one and i have to say it is really awesome in all honesty i don't even need to bring the pad all i need to do is just bring the core unit around and voila go to a hotel room i don't need to bring my dog i just bring this around and yay it's done oh wow and at the same time, too, uh, you can put it on your laptop because it has what you call this uh, USB Type C and all the accessories that you need. Like, go down the website and you see all of the awesome things that it can or could do. Yeah, I'll take a look at that. Yeah, there's a lot of things. Blah, blah, blah. So, in all honesty, this is a product that I was surprised and kind of wanted. It surprised me because it did the stuff that I wanted it, <laughs> I wanted it to do. Yay! But other than that, hmm, uh, nothing much really. It was fun. That's about it. So you don't buy much accessories, do you then? No, not really. I like I said, the only thing I have is a screen protector, and the I, I mean, I have the uh, the Pro controller, and that's all I could think. That's all I have really. Uh, so. After looking at this, would you have any interest in getting the, what you call this, uh, jump gate? I might. It looks interesting. Ah, it is, what, worldwide delivery, free and fast shipping to over 200 countries and regions. Yay. I hope it's worldwide. <laughs> it says it's worldwide. It has two colors, white and black. Because I know there are some sites that don't uh, ship worldwide and it's only in the States. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, that sucks. Actually, speaking of shipping, I don't know if this will be out of topic or not, but did you did Silver ever get his gift from you? <laughs> not yet. Not yet. I, I, I'm still I'm still in that phase where, okay, I need to go to the post office to get the packaging parcel to send to the state and whatnot. At the same time, too, I'm a bit lazy and <laughs> there's a lot <laughs> of things for me to do. Uh, mostly my fault, but still, I'll try. Yeah, I'm sure he'll love your gift. Oh yeah, he he will. He he will. I <laughs> uh, can't wait. But other than that, right? I, I guess that's about it. There, there's not much to talk about this topic because it's a matter of perspective and interest. And oh, Zelda, did you buy it? Mm, which one? Breath of the Wild. No. No. Why not? I never really. I was. I mean, I played Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time, mm -hmm. and I mean, I liked it, but I never was into the whole Legend of Zelda franchise. Really? No. I mean, like, I'll play it if it's on sale, but I'm not that crazy for it. Ah, okay. What about the newer one? Uh, what was it called? Link. Link's Awakening. Yeah. Yeah, that one I'd prob I'd probably get because it interests me. Ah, yeah. It, it looks like a fun game. So, yeah. All right, all right, all right. So, I, I guess that's about it. I mean, we can blabber on and stuff and blah, blah, blah. I mean, I could recommend one game 
but I don't know if a lot of people will like it, because it depends yeah. on their taste. But it's a fighting game. Well, Ooh. at least that's where it's called a fighting game, because it even got the best award in the video game awards for our best fighting game. And that would be Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. <laughs> ah, yes. that That is an awesome game. Honestly, yep, yep. But uh, I, I got it on the, whatchamacallit, uh, Wii U and 3DS. Oh, but that's different. Yeah, not really. That's a little. Actually, there's a little difference. True. I'm not saying that it's not. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, I I have interest in that game, but man, like, like I mentioned before, I'm sharing the Switch, so I don't really want to buy most of the games that have uh, that are my interest. Yeah. But yeah, I I I do want to try and get the games. It's fun. Terry's in it. Oh yeah, Terry. Uh, they re- they recently released a new Fire Emblem fighter called <laughs> Byleth. Uh man, people were so hype. Like, oh, uh, Kami. Uh, sorry, uh, not Kami. Um, Shigeru. No, no, Shigeru. Satoshi. Satoshi was it? No, Shigeru Miyamoto. Nah, she Shigeru is the Mario. Oh, she's talking about the person who made the uh, Smash Bros. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, that's uh, Sakurai. Yeah, Sakurai. So he he's showing a tree. Oh yeah, it's gonna be Devil May Cry. Nope. <laughs> Honestly, I was a bit upset too when I saw it. I'm like, oh really? Another Fire Emblem character? <laughs> and then after they show the meat costumes, and then they all of a sudden show Cuphead. It's like, see, he would have been a great DLC fighter, but you put him in the costume instead. <laughs> well, Cuphead is yeah. No, in all honesty, I think Cuphead as a Costume is just perfect for it. That's what I think. But other than that, I don't know. I mean, another Fire Emblem character? <laughs> well, from what I've heard, I mean, I don't know if this is true or not, but this is from what I've heard, that it's not really Sakurai's call on what character you're at. It's basically Nintendo, like the big com- the big guy's company. I mean, what am I saying? The big guys of the company, they mm-hmm. make the decisions and they're like, okay, we want you to add this character. At the same time, too, if I remember right, there's a list of pre-approved characters for Sakurai to pick from. Yes. At least that's what I've heard, too. Yeah. I guess they really want to push Byleth because uh, Fire Emblem and whatnot and just to push the game. Did it? The game came out with, what, a new DLC? Mm, I don't know. Huh, that's what I heard. Oh, I, this... At first, though, when I saw the Fire Emblem character, I'm like, who's this Fire Emblem character? And then they said, oh, he's from this Fire Emblem game. I'm like, oh, that Fire Emblem game from the Switch. Because there's a new Fire Emblem game for the Switch. <laughs> uh, oh, there's another game that I'm really interested in getting, but it's kind of sold out everywhere. Oh, really? Sold out everywhere? Yeah, it's sold out everywhere, impossible to get. And, and what's that, that? Ring Fit Adventure. Really? Yeah. Like, it's over not here, sold out over here. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, over here locally, it is sold out at most of my game stores. Like, there's one store who I frequent says that uh, the game sold out even if you go pre-order it for the next batch those two slots in May and June are booked oh, like, wow. no, yeah I know right so r- right here right now I, I am interested in this because let's just say that I am starting to develop a belly and my belly is big <laughs> <laughs> so I want to try and get fit and whatnot. and playing an RPG that makes you get fit is awesome so, I'm interested in it. Do you have it, by the way? I don't, actually. Ah. How much is it, by the way? Do you have, do you have any idea? Uh, I can quickly check. Go ahead, man. Because I am... Oh, my goodness. The hell. There's a store here that sells it for 850 Malaysian ringgit. Really? Yeah. That's, that's gouging the price. Wow. Alright, well, for here in Canada, it's a hundred dollars. A hundred dollars Canadian. That'll be four hundred Mayan, was it? I uh, guess. I'm I'm terrible at math. I wouldn't know. I'm just guessing. Yeah, yeah, probably. Give me a second if I can bring up the converter. But oh my goodness, like that, 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 that is just a 
bad all around. Mm-hmm. Like, gouging the audience. Like, man, that's not good. 800 versus your, what, $100? You know what? I have my converter here, so I'm just going to... Um, what was it? 850, did I mention? 850, convert to the dollars. $205. That's just excessive. Yeah, that's a bit too much. I mean, games these days are so expensive. Like, literally, one game almost costs you $100. True. I mean, for my end, it's always $100. Okay. Um, Canadian $100 uh, convert to my cash would be uh, $312. So, that's still affordable. You know, probably I should buy it from you or try ask you to help me get it. <laughs> I just ship it. Yeah, you, 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 you work for the shipping company. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, we should talk about this offline. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But anywho, um, I, I, I guess if I do get it, I'll let you know and see how if I'm fit or not. <laughs> but anywho. Uh, I guess we can wrap this up then, right? Uh, yeah, I guess we can. Yay. I don't know what else we can talk about. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, like, this is just, you know, a buyer's guide. Okay, you know what? Technically, this is going to be a buyer's guide, and we've been talking in circles. So, let's do the guide thing. So, if you're a new Switch owner, Terra, or if you're guiding a new Switch owner, what would you tell them to get? Well... If you're a new Switch owner, it depends on what games you really like to play in the past or what kind of fan you are. Now, if you're a Legend of Zelda fan, then I would suggest your first games would be one of the Legend of Zelda games. And if you like Pokemon, then obviously you know either Pokemon Sword or Shield. And if you like um, fighting games, which there's plenty, uh, you can get Smash Bros. Or you can get Mortal Kombat, all that stuff. Or if you like racing games, there's all kinds of racing games too, except the only racing game I know is Mario Kart 8. Like I said, it depends on what kind of taste you have. True, 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 true. I, I would agree with those comments there. And in terms of accessories, uh, in all honesty, for me personally, I, I just love the accessory kits for the Switch. It's just bonkers. But in all honesty, I would recommend getting a screen protector. That is key because like Terra mentioned, uh, you're putting your switch in the dock, in and out, in and out. So the possibility of getting scratches are there. And on top of that, uh, go get the uh, Nintendo Switch Pro controller. If you can't afford the official one, uh, a third-party one would do. I think what, Nyko, Nyko has it, Hori has it. Uh, Hori is a good trusted brand from what I can tell. That's a good one. Um, yeah, they're there, there. You can give it a shot. Would you agree? Or you're not really oh, yeah. sure? No, I'd agree. So yeah, if, if you have the cash, go get an official one. But if you're a bit low on cash, go get a third-party one. Um, my recommendation would be Nyko. Not really Nyko. A, whatchamacallit, is Hori. Hori are good. Hori are always good. There is, a, there is a caveat to it, though. Uh, there's the, what, wired version and the wireless version, which kind of puzzles me. Tara, what, what, what do you recommend? I guess it depends also on how people... Because I know some people, maybe they like the old days where nothing was wireless and they liked it, everything wired, or like, maybe they have different colored wires. I don't know. I know some people do like to... Well, I guess, too, another thing is that if it's wired, you could connect it to your computer because you don't have to worry about no Bluetooth or something like that. I don't know. It's a, that's a tough one. Yeah, with the, the what, plug-in to your PC and use it as a controller? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. I mean, uh, from what I can tell or from what I heard, if it's a wired controller, you won't have that much input lag. But the Bluetooth technology for this day and age you won't get that much lag. So, there's not much of a difference. Yeah. Yeah. So, basically, go for your budget. Like, 
If you really need to get a pro controller but don't have the cash to get an official or a wireless one, get a wired one. It's not that bad. Like, the cable is pretty long. I think 3 feet, was it? And 3 feet is long, right? Oh yeah, 3 feet is very long. Yeah, so it's enough. It's enough uh, length for you to sit in the couch and just enjoy your game. And other than that, if you're... If you are the type of person who likes to travel a lot, like you go on vacations or you go on business trips and you like want to <laughs> yep, true, true. and you want to play your switch in your hotel room. Uh the Skull and Co uh what what did I call it again? Uh Jump Gate. Uh, yep. Yes. That is a product that I highly recommend getting. I did it. Uh, I bought it. I tried it, and I found it to be really useful and good. And right now, they have a twenty percent off on the thing on the product. So, if you go get it now, I got no idea when this offer will last. And yeah, it'll be thirty nine dollars. Uh, it's thirty nine dollars. Is similar to the core unit itself. So, yay! It is is a steal. So yay. That's not a bad price. Mm-hmm. And there are, I, I highly recommend you looking into it because it is a good product. Yeah, I'll look into it. So anyway, other than that, that's about it, I guess. Probably a carrying case and whatnot. Did you buy a carrying case? Uh, actually, I got it as a birthday gift a couple of years ago. Oh, cool. What is your uh, well, sorry? What is your carrying case like? Is it branded like anything? Uh, it has Mario's logo, uh, logo on it. Uh, I bought the Splatoon one. I didn't even know there was a Splatoon one. I don't know. There is, like, yeah, there's the squids. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that, that, that's my recommendation. Screen protector, controller, jump gate if you're a traveler, and a, whatchamacallit, carrying case just to protect your Switch from getting scuff and scratches. Yeah. <laughs> So, anywho, um, let's wrap it up. If you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at Damien's Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Tara, where can the good people find you? Well, the good people could find me on Facebook, the Unite Twitter, or YouTube under the name Tortero1324, or they could just do a Google search, and I'll be on all of those platforms, including my Patreon page. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And also please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And search your radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on polyphonive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you'll get a week's later access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Amy, Tristan, and also myself, Like, Thank you so much, guys. You are great. Oh, there's another game that just popped into my head. Untitled Ghost Game. Honk. Oh. <laughs> well, you mean the Untitled Silver Quill game? Honk. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. No, but inst- inst- instead, it would, it, instead of that, it would be the goose going meh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that game is fun. Stupid fun. It is. It's one of those games that's stupid, but it's fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anywho, yeah, um, I have been Norman Sanzo. And I am Torterra. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Bye-bye. Hawk! <laughs>